Right, a very warm welcome back. Uh, if you just joined us, we're taking a look at the role of traditional leaders uh, in South Africa. But I guess this is a conversation uh, that could be happening in other parts of the continent, given the uh, shared histories and uh, commonalities that we have. What role do traditional leaders have in a modern society? What contributions can they make? Should they be given more powers? What we're finding is that over time, as the rule of law constitutions are written, some of their powers have been curtailed over the time. And is that a good or a bad thing? Your thoughts, uh, hashtag TNA Biz Brief at Morning Live SABC. We also have an audience here that's uh, watching live. And uh, we're going to go to them now uh, and get some of their thoughts and their questions uh, for our panelists. And we start at table number nine, where we'll find Tokom Kwanazi Kaluva. Uh, just put your microphone closer it to your mouth. It is a rapidly evolving uh, culture. How do you All right, so we're, we're not getting your microphone, unfortunately. Let me see if we can get another one to you. Uh, is there another microphone floating around? All right, just uh, try again. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, uh, how do you make sure that cultural practices in a, a world that is evolving so fast, are protected. What is the role of traditional leaders in making sure that even young people still see the value in cultural practices, but also in a world that is pushing hard against traditional practices? How then do you swim upstream and make sure that you preserve and promote those cultural practices. Okay. Who's going to answer that one? Horsey? Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, it, it is a challenge, but my opinion is that uh, culture, you don't learn culture. It's, it's culture, you grow up with it. That's why if you grow in a country where they speak a different language, you will automatically speak that language. It's enculturation. But I think we have to go deeper into our youth. Start with the youth. Try to make them to realize and appreciate their own culture and be, pr be proud of their own culture. I've seen so many people, other cultures, even the young people, they, they, they really you know, train them as young as they are to know who they are. So I think that's the only way we can preserve our culture and also to indicate which are the, you know, in the culture, which are those things which we have do, to do away with and the things which we think are good for our youth and the community. Thank you. Can okay. I add and say we are also engaging with the basic education at the level of government that they must introduce language universally across all the schools from grade one until grade 12. So they will be starting next year, introducing a compulsory language of the mother tongue so that then children can grow speaking their own languages uh, beautifully as they do now with English. And then so that they remain with their national identity as South African. I think it's one, but modern tools such as mobiles and others, the indigenous games, for example, why can't we have games in the, the and then also the PlayStation? bring in the stick fighting and others you know, into it. And I've got youngsters from Sishiro, Bukamoso, uh, senior primary schools. They just won a competition on a debate this weekend in the indigenous games where they were debating about initiation. And then I then said to them that come here as a prize, you have won. Can you stand up please? All they right. can see you on the Get table. Get a microphone to them actually. And that girl there was number one in the competition, and the boy that is light in complexion was number two, and then, then there's number three. Okay. And then they are with their uh, educators. They were so beautiful in around the initiation and how we need to manage it. Right. They were defending it, saying that, yes, there are deaths, but we must prevent the deaths, but continue with culture and modernize the way we are doing initiation and circumcision without creating deaths, but we should not wash it away. And I think it was beautiful right. coming from a township, you know. Well, let's hear from them. Um, is there a microphone there? 
So j- j- just say your name and then the school. Your, your school and your, share your thoughts in terms of what you shared at this uh, uh, Indigenous Games debate. Um, well, good morning to everyone. Um, I'm Mahata Ofente and I'm from Bagamsa Senior Secondary School. So basically what we debated about was safe initi- initiation practices as we saw that a lot of youngsters are dying there while uh, taking part in these processes. And as a young person, I feel like that is not supposed to happen because somebody is supposed to be a future doctor and they couldn't make it because of the illegal initiation schools that are happening around the place. Mm -hmm. So basically, my opinion is that we should just preserve our culture, not to stop anything, but just to make sure that we have safe initiation practices, we have legal schools, we have um, people who are trained to do proper procedures in order to save the youth for South Africa. Thank you. All right. Okay, uh, if you could just give the microphone. Okay, so I'm just wondering, you know, we're talking about this modern society where we've got Scotanes and all sorts of things <laughs> coming through. And I'm just wondering, as young people, you see these traditional leaders, these horses, are you, do you understand the importance that they play? And is this a resource that as young people that you are using um, for guidance and leadership? Well, when we, when we look into it, uh, it's a limited number of youth who know the importance of culture. This is uh, another solution we proposed in that debate that this, this youngsters must be educated concerning their culture and they must know how to respect their culture and the importance of their culture and the moral value it has within the society. Because it's not really that they don't want to support it, it's because they don't know anything about it. Mm. And if they know it, they'll know the importance and respect it and practice it. Mm. All right, okay. <laughs> and then uh, the last one, if you, you just share your thoughts uh, about um, the role of youth and what you can teach your peers, I guess, uh, uh, vis-a-vis our, our traditions and culture. Okay, before I say anything yeah. else, I'd like to greet everyone else who's here. Uh, I go by the name of uh, Matole Heri. I'm from uh, the School of Bukamaso Senior Secondary School. Uh, we were, as she said, we were debating about the initiation rights, and we realized that uh, today the, uh, the initiation schools are not safe as People who, as uh, there are people there who are operating uh, without the knowledge and the skills, they just do it uh, for money to earn income so that they can satisfy their needs and wants. So the uh, the solution that we bo- that we brought forth to the table is that we we urge the traditional leaders to uh, look for people who have the experience, who have the knowledge to p- operate in procedures that take place in initiation schools, so that. When parents send their children to initiation schools, they can send their parents with the mindset that our children are going to be in the hands okay. of people who, who care about their well-being and them being safe and sound. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very much indeed, and congratulations on doing so well at the Indigenous Games. We're going to take another quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue with our audience and uh, also you at home. And I'm going to ask um, our female horsey here a very difficult question. Uh, because initiations, really, she shouldn't know anything about them. How does she deal with them in her community? All of that after this. <laughs> 